It's Tuesday. It's time to talk about toys. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you had a good good Monday, good start to the week. Yes, we are going to talk about Firestorm. So as a lead into Firestorm, because I don't Arsenal Roy, I don't know if uh if you're expecting the specific toy that I'm going to look at today. Uh oh, Zardoz ready to murder GW again. Another day that ends in Y. So today I'm, I'm we're gonna look at a Firestorm toy. We're gonna look at a couple of things as usual, and I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about some of the personalities in the toy world. Uh, I'm tr I'm gonna try not to name anybody by name, if I can manage that. Um, but there's some interesting interesting personalities. Uh, one thing that the Oh, Zardoz's new comment picture was super bad. I, I haven't uh, I haven't looked too deeply into it yet. So there's always a balance with... Well, although, I mean, who knows? The, the world is changing so much these days with, with like, in-person shopping and, and when we lost Toys R Us a couple of years ago now. But for a long time, there's always been this balance with big toy companies with how do we make toys for kids and toys for collectors? And do we have to divide that out? Is it, you know, and, and how do they overlap? And so we get things like like these figures here. So this Kilowog is from, I always forget the specific name of the line, but this is, it's Mattel's little kid line, and they do a bunch of DC toys for little kids, and they're obviously blocky and chunky, but they do characters that are clearly not characters that most kids are going to be familiar with, right? So then we have a little kid silly line that veers heavily into collector territory, right? Collectors want obscure characters, variants of, you know, regular characters, uh, all sorts of interesting things. So this line, um, again, I forget, it, play school, whatever, whatever it was. They did a bunch of Green Lanterns. There was an entire Oa playset they made at one point, which I didn't get. I always kick myself for not getting it. But, um, and again, then at Target, there was a line of Justice League action figures that are obviously, you know, they're, they're very clunky, not a bunch of articulation. They don't look terrible. It's got a, it's got a definitely an, like an animated feel to it. Uh, that Oa playset was huge. And at the time, I didn't really have space for it. So I know I, I should have gotten it. Uh, but again, like these were very specifically modeled off of spe a specific time period in the comics, which was cool. So I have these. Um, I think I have the whole set. They're not, they're not great, but they're okay. They were cheap. Um, this one was, this was just a target line like all by itself. I forget what they what the name of it specifically was, and it was just the Justice League, and then I think there was a Lex Luthor, maybe. It was really short lived, yeah. So I'm not sure what the name of this one was. So then sometimes toy companies like Mattel they try to get really tricky and combine what could we do for kids and adults and sort of mix it up, and so that's what we're going to talk about with the Firestorm today. So for a little while there was a line called. Total Heroes from Mattel. Now, Total Heroes had figures on shelves in stores, sort of, sort of like one-off figures that were a little bit more, a little bit kidified. So this is the the Green Lantern, which of course I got. Um, a decent, you know, it's it's approximately six inch scale. It's it has like an animated feel to it. But it's got pretty good articulation. Came with accessories. You know, not not a bad looking figure at all. It's, I, I kind of dig the like the slightly angular forms, right? But then they thought, hmm, how can we? Yeah, it's kind of a goofy axe, but uh, it's a you know it's a it's a it's a hard light construct, so it can look like anything. So then the guys at the people over at Mattel, and somebody in particular who I'm gonna. Thought, well, how do we? How can we really milk this for collectors? So, there weren't just Total Heroes. There were also Total Heroes Ultra. 
So these were figures that you could only get directly from Mattel. Mattel had its own web store for a while called MaddieCollector.com. Maddie Collector. Um, there was... Do they have a picture of Maddie on here? No, by this point they stopped using... There was like a... Uh, um, what's his name? Like Dennis the Menace kind of style uh, character Mattel had as their... Yeah. So anyway, so they had Maddie Collector where collectors are king. That was their website. And so you could get these special packs. Essentially what these packs... They did a few of these. And what they gave you was a figure and then a bunch of different accessories and different ways to outfit that figure as different characters. So probably the most famous one, not being Firestorm, but the most famous one was another Green Lantern figure where you got a Green Lantern body, some different hands, and then different heads. So you could depict this Green Lantern as Jon Stewart, as... Um, you know, one of the one of the the fish bird aliens, or there was another one as well. So that was pretty cool, right? Swap it up, and that is where I got this firestorm. Uh, you'll notice there is a that's supposed to actually be here, but <laughs> they it didn't glue down quite quite properly. Uh, this is a few years old, like most of the stuff I open, so it's not. I'm trying to see if there's a date on here. I don't see one. So it says, when terrorists attack their high school, athlete Ronnie Raymond and science-minded Jason Rush are fused together by the God particle created by their Professor Martin Stein into the DC superhero Firestorm. But two minds in one body don't always get along, and the impetuous Raymond and the brainy Rush are frequently at odds with control switching back and forth between the two. By shifting his own atomic structure, Firestorm has the ability to fly, to pass through solid matter, to regenerate himself, and to generate powerful blasts of energy from his hands. Now, that description and mm, arguably most of what's in this pack are pretty specifically modern, um, the modern retelling of Firestorm. Firestorm has gone through some pretty big changes over the years. Uh, the original was Ronnie Raymond was a college student with his professor Martin Stein uh, visiting a nuclear power plant and something went wrong and then ended up fusing them together. Um, later on they'd go through there there's there's a lot to the firestorm continuity but um yeah later they would martin would get separated and it would just be ronnie then later ronnie fused with jason with sometimes martin hanging around and then they and then eventually they split into separate characters then there was a, a fusion of all the firestorms into a character called fury yeah, it's... There's a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's start cutting these things out. So yeah, for these total heroes... Oh, the other unfortunate thing was... Well... Oh, right, yeah, the fire elemental part. That was interesting. And then he got to do some fun things with the other elementals of the DC world. And there have been other Firestorm-like characters, uh, especially from other countries. They did some cool stuff with that. Firestorm's definitely... Uh, I mean, they've tried. He's had his own book at times, and it's never it's never gone especially well. <laughs> but uh, Firestorm's a character... I, there's a lot of potential there, but they haven't... Rarely do they, like, really nail nail it, at least for very long. So we have all of our bits and pieces. Oh. And again, so the basic head that it comes with is the Ronnie head. He's He's got a goofy smile. It's... In many of the depictions, Ronnie is a pretty fun-loving, happy-go-lucky guy when he's not <laughs> forced to fight evil, fusing with other people's bodies. Uh, and then we have the Jason Rush head. Some At one point, Firestorm was Jason and his girlfriend <laughs> combined. 
uh, until, well, Ronnie murdered her. It's complicated. Uh, not on purpose. And then there's the, this is a fury head. That's sort of the a fused version of the characters that is much more kind of alien. So it's basically got a see-through face. You can just kind of see like its mouth details. Uh, this, the fury part was part of the new 52 when uh, our friend Ethan Van Skyver was heading up Firestorm um, working with a couple other people. It wasn't, wasn't just him. Yeah, definitely scary. Uh, in the comics, Fury also has a very different body style. It's not just this body with a different head. He's much bigger and scarier. And then what's really cool is this set comes with the ghostly head of Professor Stein. So we've got translucent plastic. There's actually a pretty good amount of detail in there. So you could have, and that's especially in the old comics, you'd have like a little drawing of an invisible Martin Stein hovering over Ronnie's head or over his shoulder, telling him things. Not only like, you know, be a hero, do good stuff, but also Firestorm's molecular powers, especially in the old days, uh, but they were, they were sort of limited only by his knowledge of the periodic table. So he could turn, he could essentially transmute elements as long as he knew what the hell he was doing. <laughs> and so Ronnie Raymond, the student, was not quite an expert, but his physicist professor whispering in his ear could help him uh, manipulate molecular bonds and add protons and things like that. So yeah, this that's a, a super neat accessory for for a Firestorm action figure. Otherwise, these figures pretty much have usually they have mostly the same parts. Um, yeah, I'm looking to see if the sculpts are different at all. It appears to be pretty. Oh, there's some extra plastic on here. Uh, pretty much the same, except for welcome, uh, Tiny Chris. I uh, I feel you. But yes, we're we're just looking at toys here, <laughs> mostly. We veer into the political sometimes. Uh, but yeah. So again, while these toys are, especially this one, Firestorm is clearly for very specifically for collectors. Uh, the figures themselves are fairly basic they as far as i can tell except for the heads they have the exact same sculpt they just reuse the same mold and all of the detail is added by paint which is not the worst thing in the world especially if the figure is not too expensive uh, i will say that the standard figures that you could buy on store shelves were appropriately priced these ultra figures were very expensive to get through maddie collector I want to say that these were, I want to say they were like pushing 30 bucks or something. It was dumb. Yeah, it was, it was dumb. I did, didn't appreciate that, but I did get two of them. Uh, we've got the standard swappable hands. Nothing really new there. Uh, he's got a, a grippy fist. I don't really know why he needs that of all things. Um, these are cool elements, so they've got the little atomic power whatevers that you can attach, ideally at least. Hmm, let's see, I don't want to break it, and there we go. And these usually look pretty cool. So it's got those. Let's pop. Let's let's switch some hands. That's a good hand. You can either do a. It could be karate chopping. Oh god, it's so stumpy. <laughs> but it's fine. 
Yeah, and um, Arsenal on di- on various Firestorm figures, they've done they've done different things with these atomic things. Either they're accessories that you can add on, or yeah, they'll be part they'll be actual hand parts that you swap out. So we've got those. I don't. Oh uh, yeah, it'll it'll only fit with the fists, which is interesting. Now, when Jason became Firestorm, at first. It was pretty much the same look to the character, uh, but they did give him a, the yellow around the head. Or did that come a little bit later, rather than the red? And then eventually, in that same run that we don't really talk about too much, uh, they did split, and then you had a separate Ronnie and Jason, and they both were Firestorm. <laughs> um, but it was cool, because what they did was they took the, the colors, and they, they palette swapped them. So one was red with yellow, the other one was yellow with red, and that was... That was actually really cool. They even replicated that in Hero Clicks at one point. Uh, arguably, they got they got the dials mixed up between the two of them, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, it's a solid figure. It's everything that I expected it to be, and not really anything more or less. And then there's this thing. So what the heck? What the heck is this? Obviously, it's a battering ram effect. This can plug in there. Now, I assume you could jam a hand into it and do one of these kind of things. But it's massive and it's super heavy plastic, so... It's not like he could stand up with it. So I guess he could just be shooting it at the ground. <laughs> yep, yep, just jam a hand into it. But, um, I mean, it's cool. I don't know if you can see the details, but... It, oh, there you go. It's got, like, metal rivets. There's a nose ring and stuff. And again, like, with this one, I gotta wonder, was this a... Uh, was something that they reused. I mean, this could easily be recolored to be a, a lantern construct or use this as is as a Sinestro Core construct. But um, how can we how can we justify the expense of this kit at a big goofy looking thing? All right, well, this is just going to go in the accessories box. <laughs> but Firestorm will live on my shelf. Yes. And, and yeah, people know Firestorm from comics, from the uh, Arrowverse. And various other places. So let's compare some Firestorm toys. Uh, I'll probably leave mine as... You know what? I don't know. I like how serious the Jason head is. And honestly, with that red, with the red neck, the yellow, the yellow does look good on there. Maybe I'll leave him as, as Jason. Cool. But then, of course, we gotta have we gotta have Martin peeking over the shoulder. That's just too cool. So what other Firestorm toys do I have? Well, if we go way, way back, we've got this one. Oh, so Tiny Chris, Firestorm is complicated, <laughs> but basically uh, Firestorm is usually two people that are normal humans, but when they transform into Firestorm, they fuse together into one being. Um, often with the, a college professor who sort of hitches along for the ride. Um, typically, Martin Stein has no control over the body, but can just sort of ethereally speak to the. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it gets it gets weird at some points. Yes, so this is the old, old, old superpowers figure. He's got the the action. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I 
they're all goofy, but this one, this one, it might be my favorite. I love that. Not a bad figure, especially for the for the age in which it came out. Uh, I love the super high flared shoulders. That's just that's just good costume design. Again, like these figures were articulated. Fly them around. These were these were the best. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and the, just like the atomic symbol right in your face. It was, uh, it's great. Anyway, so that's a very early one. Uh, probably my favorite. Oh, man, I loved, I love, loved, loved the Infinite Heroes line from Mattel. And they just, they just ruined this line. But it were three and three quarter inch figures. Uh, this one has an especially huge fire hairdo. Just like going straight up, very a much more serious, somber firestorm. But yeah, this was a three and three quarter inch scale. Like the figures were actually they used, they had some good different bodies for them. So not every, so not every hero was massively muscled and huge. Uh, the shoulders a little bit more toned down. Well, thankfully, yeah, Tiny Chris. So when <laughs> when firestorm is not superheroing. Uh, he does separate back into their into their constituent parts. Uh, one of the most famous Firestorm toys is this one, the DC Universe Classics version. And again, this one has the very similar uh, atomic energy effect that you just pop on and off. Hey, Patty. Uh, this one, for some reason, like it's got a bunch of paint wear on it. That I hadn't noticed, so that's kind of lame. What are you gonna do? And yeah, typically modern companies will try to do something with transluc translucent plastic for the hair. This one did a pretty good job with the darker leading up to the, the more translucent yellow. And then there have been various other firestorms and other lines that. Again, veer into the sillier things. Uh, DC for a while did these these little pocket heroes that were just, just, just garbage. <laughs> I love them for their, for sort of the the style and the the depths they went in the in the character lineup for these. But it was just such a crappy figure. I mean, I see what they were going for, but it was just, it was junky. So I, I just have a handful of those. And then uh, this one was kind of cool. And then I mentioned it, and I usually don't have them on hand because my hero collection is uh, is in my closet, and it's all boxed and organized. But actually, I did have a Firestorm that was just lying around. So HeroClix has done... A bunch of firestorms over the years, not as many as like Batman and such, but but a few. And they even did that Fury character, that combined version. So yeah, got a few a few firestorms. Now what I didn't pull out, what I didn't pull out, <laughs> uh, and I do have. Several is so over the years. Not only does Firestorm has a insanely complicated continuity and history, but various forms of Firestorm and various people who have been part of Firestorm have died and subsequently come back to life in different ways. But there were there was a Black Lantern Firestorm, so. If you're not familiar with the Black Lanterns, they're they're reanimated people who died. They're not exactly zombies because they do have their intelligence and their memories and all that, uh, but they are evil. So there was a Black Lantern firestorm, and then that character sort of got to stick around after most of the Black Lanterns left, and then became Death Storm. But then there was later they added another Death Storm from Earth from a, a separate Earth. And continuity got really muddled as to, yeah, you had to keep track of which one was which. So I have some toys of, of those other characters as well. But, but they're not, 
actual firestorm. Yeah, yeah, Arsenal Roy. They, you know, you gotta, you gotta swap out people every so often. Tag somebody new in. Jason's girlfriend was part of the Firestorm Matrix for a while. I can't remember her name offhand, which is not great <laughs> that I can't remember the girl's name. Jenny? No, not Jenny. Uh, something. But the, I don't believe. Firestorm ever appeared, ever presented as female, even when she was involved. I think she was, yeah, oh yeah, she's she's dead. They, Of course she's dead. She got, yeah. Uh, she actually, she got salted, right? That's how, that's how Ronnie killed her, by turning her into salt. Uh, <laughs> I mean, comic books, right? But yeah, so when she was part of Firestorm, she was more, she was like, um, like, Professor Stein just whispering in Jason's ear, but not actually. Uh... <laughs> Comic books. What are uh, What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But yeah, R Ronnie had a had a really. I mean, it came out of nowhere. But Ronnie died in. Oh, which event was it? It was. Shoot, I was just thinking about this. I had read it, I had reread it not that long ago. Um, what event was that? Gehenna, oh, that was her name. Yeah, that's right, it was a weird name. But then they like, she had a nickname or something, I think. Um, but yeah, essentially, Ronnie was superheroing and they fought, oh, they fought, um, yes. Yeah, Identity Crisis. Yeah, they were fighting Deathstroke, right? No. No, not at that point. I forget who they were fighting. But anyway, he got stabbed with a sword through his chest. Was it Deathstroke? It was a sword. that, And then, then suddenly, because the plot demanded it, uh, it turned out <laughs> that his nuclear powers came from essentially a nuclear reactor inside his chest essentially, and so having been stabbed through his chest, he was going to literally melt down like a nuclear reactor, and so realizing at a split second what was going to happen, he flew off uh, so his meltdown wouldn't affect anyone else, and he died. But then, like I said, he came back. So. Uh, they did some cool stuff with him in the Justice League International book in the New 52 that didn't last very long. That was kind of neat. It's been hit and miss with Firestorm comics over the years. All right. So talking about toy personalities. I've been thinking about this for a while, and like I said, I, I don't want to... I don't know. I don't know if I want to name names. There's a weird thing that happens. There's a weird thing that happens in the toy industry. Here, while I talk, I, I'll, I'm going to build this. I know I know nothing about Call of Duty. Nothing. But this thing looked cool, and it's like astronauts with guns. Eh, I'm, I'm into that. There were a couple of sets of these. I don't know if it's good guys and bad guys, or just dif different factions. I don't know. Uh, Tiny Chris, those are the kind of questions that we don't we don't allow that here. You're banned. <laughs> no, I mean, look, they had never before said that he essentially had a, a reactor in his chest. It just that was just the plot point of that book, as far as I recall. Okay, so there's there's this weird thing in toy in the toy industry. You'd think that people who want to get into toys are super nerdy. You know, like me. And a lot of them are. But there's this weird trend in the toy industry that, that as soon as people... As soon as people start making toys, they want to be rock stars. What do I mean by this? Well, making toys does come... Eventually, it can come with a degree of fame. And... If you start picking up licenses, 
then you can start dealing with actual like famous people, right? Which is cool. And sometimes it just rubs off on people the wrong way. So there are there are several people in the toy industry <clears throat> who literally think of themselves as as rock stars. Uh, <clears throat> they'll dress flamboyantly to go to conventions. They'll ignore little people and always be on the lookout for celebrities to rub elbows with. And it's it's often pretty gross, to to be honest. Oh, I was gonna. I was. Why are there pieces in an empty bag? But it split. Yeah, I know, right? It's just a handful of dudes and a satellite. I don't know why there's so many pieces? It's fine. Yeah, we all want to be rock stars for sure. And this this manifests in a couple of different ways. And there are there are some people in the toy industry who are arguably. They are rock stars in the toy industry. Todd McFarlane is one. Todd McFarlane, uh, if, if you don't know the name, he what, he started out as a comic book creator. He he did art on a bunch of classic... If, if I pulled him up and if you saw some of his Spider-Man comics, you'd be like, oh, I've seen that comic before. I know that comic. So he got super famous doing Spider-Man comics and, and other stuff too. Uh, and then he created, yes, he created Spawn. When he he and a couple other people started Image Comics, and yeah, and it's just gone on from there. Spawn is Spawn still continues to come out. Uh, I haven't read a Spawn comic in a very long time, so I can't speak to their quality. Oh, uh, we we can. <laughs> I li I like the Spawn movie. So that's that's a hot take there from from Tiny Chris. But uh, I'm not going to say it's a great movie, but I like that movie. Uh, Walking Dead is Kirkman. Robert Kirkman. Oh, why is this plastic so tough? I just want to get this guy out. But anyway, so like I said, Todd has been in the comic book industry and then the toy industry for... Many, many years. He's worked with... Yeah, oh yeah, his toy company makes everything under the sun. And they have every license. They now do DC figures, which is really cool. So yeah, and Todd, like, again, he's he's genuinely, like, a super cool dude. He He's very famous, very popular. He can get away with some diva stuff. Uh, he's great to talk to. I've gotten to talk to him and interview him at, at various toy things over the years. Uh, he will not stop talking. Once he starts, he just talks forever until they say, okay, next person, time to go. <laughs> it's like, oh, good. I asked one question, and then he just spoke forever. Oh, okay, Patty, that makes sense. Yeah, he still does does some art every now and again. But he's 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 a cool dude. He just never <laughs> never stops talking. Uh, he does videos promoting his toys that are are very silly, but but he's he's fine, he's harmless. Uh, there are other people that are somewhat less so. And again, I get it. You want you want that fame, you want that popularity, but sometimes it goes to people's heads. So there's a there's a guy, and again, I don't. I don't want to use too many names. But there's a guy who was who was just like me, a super super nerdy toy fan who got who got the dream, got to work in toys. This guy, he no longer works here in town. Um, a lot of a lot of toy companies are based in California. Not all of them. Um, famously Hasbro is based in Rhode Island of all places. Uh, NECA, and by extension WizKids, is in New Jersey. So there are some East Coast things and some other companies scattered around. But there are a bunch of toy companies that are here <coughs> here in Southern California. <coughs> Excuse me. Or just California. So there's this guy. And when I say this guy has worked for 
Oh man, I think he's worked for like every major toy company. And a lot of them not for very long. This guy came up, like I said, came up as a toy collector. Online. He's about... <coughs> if I had to guess, I'd say he's about my age. Early 40s-ish. He, um... Online dude, just like the rest of us. So he's got... He had his... He had a very silly online name. And that... And he kept it into, like, his real job. So people would refer to him by his goofy online name. <coughs> Another reason why I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily reveal who it is. But if you know, then maybe you know. So this guy worked for a for many years at Mattel, and his whole idea was <coughs> essentially toy collectors are are our target audience. I want to do a lot of stuff for toy collectors. But I want to really be the face of it. I want them to see what I'm doing. I want to be famous. That was my interpretation of it. Uh, this guy was responsible for some, some very cool toys. But he really like went out of his way to put his, his name on everything. Not necessarily a bad thing, but... Um, and for a while, like I said, he worked on he worked on DC Universe classics. Uh, talked a lot about those. He worked on his his main thing was was Masters of the Universe. So again, if you go and look up, you can probably figure out who this was. But I'm not I'm not going to say specifically. Um, he just man, he always came off to me as just the smarmiest guy. He clearly did have a love for toys, which is which is what makes it worse. <laughs> but I mean, this is the kind of guy, literally, that, you know, I'd go and talk to him about toy stuff at a convention, and we'd be talking, and he would never look right at you. His eyes would always be roving around to see if there was somebody cooler or more interesting to talk to, rather than look at you. Or at least that's always the vibe I got from this guy. So he was behind the whole Maddie collector business. Like, aha, collectors. We really want to give collectors what they want or, <laughs> or make collectors go through a bunch of hoops to get what they want. Who knows? Uh, he made a bunch of online exclusives that were difficult to get. Maddie Collector famously was an awful, awful website. Uh, it, it broke all the time when they would have these big sales, pain in the ass to get the stuff that you wanted. I mean, I, I'm not necessarily blaming him for that, but it was just, it was just part, of, part of the whole thing. Yeah, and, and again, like these lines did well for a while. I can't argue that. There were a lot of collectors who were into this stuff. I, you know, I bought some of the, the DC stuff. Eventually, though, it got, it burned out the audience. Things didn't do so well. And he started bouncing around. And like I said, man, this guy, this guy worked at just like every company for a short amount of time. Um, never really hit that, that, struck that gold again um, and kind of kind of dwindled into not anonymity but definitely wasn't wasn't what he used to be yeah and again like I don't know other people like him he he had his popularity so I don't want to speak too it, it, these are just my my impressions everything okay Go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, you got down, down camera. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jesse Falcon. He's great. There are there are lots of other toy personalities, and there, like I said, there are lots of people in the toy industry who really, really want to be personalities. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's it's a thing. But yeah, so this guy ended up leaving. Southern California, moving 
and does and now offers his services as like a toy consultant for people who want to do toys and want to make toys for movies and I don't know, made a big deal about his move and how he was moving to another part of the country that's a little a little slower a little more friendly than Southern California but also seemingly maybe moved in back in with his parents I, I don't know it's it's a little complicated and now like he does YouTube videos and stuff I don't know whatever it's fine but um yeah the the personalities in the toy world are very very interesting and you can really sometimes tell like okay so why why did you get into the toy world and there are various various answers for that and definitely some people they they just want to be famous that's it they just they're like oh toys if i can i can make money i can meet a whole bunch of people in toys i'll i'll do that okay i mean it's possible but yeah, yeah, they're def definitely personalities. Um, another one is, oh, I always forget his name, which is hilarious. So there's a guy, oh shoot, what is his name? I, I hung out with him at two toy fairs ago. He's, <laughs> so there's, I, I don't know how many of you are old enough to know Mego Toys, M-E-G-O. They were eight inch figures with cloth, accessories and uh, all sorts of stuff yeah it, it, it it's it's pretty a sp pretty specific age group that that knew from Migo I I didn't grow up with Migo for some reason I mean they were they came out slightly before I was really toy collecting yeah they are back now but the guy who one of the guys who was part of the original Migo team he's part of the current they brought him back. Uh, I forget his name. He's he's very famous in the toy world, uh, not only because he created Mego, but also because he went to jail for a long time for tax stuff. Uh, <laughs> he's a very nice guy, talking to him in person. Very much a hustler. Um, you know, with whatever, <laughs> it's fine. What are you gonna do? But uh, but yeah, he's a very much a larger than life personality. And just like, oh, it's like, yeah, check out, check this out. Look at this. I got this new thing coming out. And this is going to be great. And, okay. It's, it's, it, it's Mego. It's a toy that came out a million years ago and trying to make it work again now. That, that's cool. It's fine. Um, yeah. There's another person in toys who works for... Another company who, you know, again, like kind of the wants to be a rock star, but is sort of a rock star on his own. And yeah, like I said, I, I don't, I don't really want to name names. I don't, I don't want anything getting back to me. But, um, but yeah, it's it's interesting, and yeah, you can tell you can tell these these personalities when they show up. There are lots of people in the toy industry who are very nice. Of course, they're not all they're not all like that. But yeah, I'm always reminded when I look at some Mattel stuff, especially from that era, I was like, ooh, that's when that's when that guy was there. Ugh, and his his online name was just so cringy. <laughs> But it's fine. All right, so I've got all these pieces, and somehow, if I attach these to the base, it'll be able to hold up this little thing that I made. Right. Next, I'm going to look at something that is also very based on something old, then it'll be interesting to see who of you are familiar with it or were a fan. Okay, it looks like... Oh, I see. Okay, so these... 
So, you know, that, that's a good question, Aridens. I have... So I've been a toy collector, arguably, my whole life. And again, I do still have some toys from when I was a kid. Um, I've thought and dreamed of doing something in the toy industry itself. But I don't really have the skills or the knowledge to do it. Uh, I'm, I've been a toy journalist for a very long time. Um, I, I've, I mean, I technically I have worked tangentially in the toy industry because I did work, I did write, like I said, I've talked about this before that I, I used to write the cattle, the English catalog text for the company Kotobukiya. I did that for, um, well over a decade. I, I don't do that anymore. But beyond that, it's like, I know a lot of stuff, but I don't, I'm, I'm not a sculptor. I'm not a painter, you know, in that kind of sense. Uh, I don't know the logistics of that world. Now, if I had an idea for a toy, I have a Rolodex worth of people, <laughs> Rolodex, worth of people that I could call up and say, hey, I want to make this toy. I need a great, you know, I need a great sculptor, a great painter, package design. Like, I know all the people who do all of those things. But other than, yeah, other than like being the, the mind behind something or doing the research or investing, I guess. Um, yeah, it's kind of tough. I don't know, maybe one day. I certainly have ideas for, I've had ideas for toys over the years. I don't know if they're any good, but I thought they were cool. Toys are, yeah, toys are very expensive to produce. Surprisingly so, for a lot of people. Uh, Alright, so we got... They gave us one completed figure in the package, and then a bunch that you have to assemble, and then all of their accessories. Now it looks like... Again, I don't know anything about this Call of Duty stuff, but there are some white uniformed astronauts and some gray... Oh, they have flags. Okay, hold on, hold on. The white ones are Americans. Tiny, tiny American flag. And the gray ones are... I, I don't know what that's supposed to be. If that's a real flag, I don't recognize it. If it's a fake flag from Call of Duty World, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Oh, I see, Aridens. I see what you're asking. Um, do I have any? I don't think so. The actual toy maker, the character. Um, sorry, I made it all about me. <laughs> Does anybody play Call of Duty and know what that flag is? Is that a... It must be another nation. Oh my god, so many bags. Alright, I'm trying to remember how to build these. They have way too many parts for a tiny little person. Oh, I can't stand this. Okay, so the belt piece goes this way. Nope, this way. Okay. But yeah, like I said, I mean, that's there. There are some very cool, very nice people in the toy world. Uh, people who I've known for a really long time. I really do love going to Toy Fair, especially when you get to talk to all these people, because I've. I started working for. Figures dot com in two thousand seven, I think. So there, there are toy professionals that I've known for, you know, for a long time. Some of them I would call friends, acquaintances. Uh, villain faction from the Call of Duty Ghost game. It's for the Federation of the Americas. Ooh, interesting. But yeah, and then there are the people who, when we go to Toy Fair, I go, ugh, we got to talk to that guy again. 
rates. Oh, I just remembered another company where the the guy in charge is a total douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fine. What are you going to do? People are people, right? You're going to get some good ones. You're going to get some not so good ones. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got the basic dude. Now these are just helmet heads. There's no no face or anything. Uh, the visors don't move. Can't take anything off. There's no swap out parts. Oh, let's see. So he needs. What am I missing here? Oh, his uh, his little breastplate deal. Oh yeah, there there's there's a fair amount of drama. <laughs> And then just, you know, people getting fired and things not working out. It can be it can be fairly chaotic. And then fighting for licenses. Now why does he have the black helmet? Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. So many so many douchebags. <laughs> like really a lot. Of them unfortunately and again I think it's just because they they get just enough fame right you've got you you're making a product that a, a lot of people want you've got exclusives you've got limited edition stuff people are fighting for your stuff that gives you a, a, a sense of like oh man I'm look at this they want they want my stuff blah 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 uh, it's easy if you're if it's easy if you're in that position to, especially nowadays, to do your own social media, uh, to do your own promotional stuff. It, it didn't used to be that way before, but um, you know if you want to be the face of your company, then you can be, and you can go out there and you can you know produce your own media stuff. Um, and then again, like once you actually are at a point where you can get licenses, then you can you know now all of a sudden you're you know you're getting connected with movie studios and potentially meeting actors and yeah it just it snowballs for some people and it can be it can get a little gross all right so we've got this guy backpack goes which way this way It looks like, I wonder if there are other sets. I know there are other space sets for this Call of Duty stuff, but there are like a bunch of little, what look like little attachment points. So I wonder if there are other things that you can hook into these characters. Yeah, I mean, toy, you know, the toy world, it's, it's serious business. It is a, it's not quite as big as porn, but it's, you know, many dollars going through through the toy world. How do they shoot these weapons in space? They appear to just be standard projectile guns. I mean, as soon as you fired one of these, you'd go flying. I, I question the physics of this. I've also never played any of these games, so I don't know. God, look at this. They give you... They break down every piece, including like all the, the bits and pieces that make up the guns. Crazy. But I guess you could catalog all this stuff and then, in theory, mix and match your own parts for things. I wish there were just some more names. Like, who, who are these people? It doesn't tell you anything. A Lego set would tell you the names. You're sure, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I get it. Yeah, it, it, we don't need physics in in everything. That I I get I I understand and I agree. The science nerd in me gets frustrated sometimes with the sci-fi that's available to show my kids is generally 
Although somebody can help me out if you can think of anything better. But most of the sci-fi that is at least child-ish friendly is going to be stuff like Star Wars, some Star Trek, not all Star Trek, especially now. Um, but it's all fantastical space travel. Um, all of the stuff that has really good space physics is not for kids. Like the the Battlestar Galactica reboot, uh, the Expanse which is so good but i was like i watch it and i'm like oh i'd love to show my kids some of the some of these scenes and like immediately it, you know it's people bleeding out and avasarala cursing up a storm and it's like oh i'd have to like time my pausing and fast forwarding i guess i could go online and find uh the cuts of just space stuff Oh, that's true, I guess. If your backpack was tied into what you were doing and at the the exact moment you fired the gun, the backpack had jets that balanced out that the physics, that, that, could, that could work. Yeah, just not... Not super... <laughs> yeah, cutting out, cutting out all the adult stuff and it's three minutes long. Uh, I suppose... I suppose I could probably go back and show him some Babylon 5. That at least tried to depict space stuff, you know, more realistically as far as vectors and turning around and things. I mean, obviously not as not as um, not as physics precise as uh, as expands. Right, Amos is just <laughs> yeah, just not even there. Oh, Babylon 5 is getting a remaster? I did not hear that. That's cool. <gasps> Ooh. It's been it's been I'll use I'll say what the kids say. It's been a minute since I watched Babylon 5. Oh, it dropped today. Well, fantastic. I know that, that everyone's been wondering. That's so cool. Awesome. I'm very excited about that. I look forward to it. Yeah, it, like I said, I've in, when it was on TV, I watched all of Babylon 5 uh, for sure. I know I watched... I watched some of it a little bit later on, you know, when it was playing somewhere. But but yeah, it's it's been a while since I watched it. Cool. Yeah, hopefully we get, we get the whole... Phys we get some physical media too. I love physical media. Especially, you know... Like Internet goes down, companies lose licenses for things, and then you're screwed out of your favorite content. I wouldn't say I buy much physical media these days, but I probably should. Oh man, also when you have kids, physical media is good to have. Because goddamn, if kids really want to watch something and the internet's not working or you can't find it on... Whoa, that leg went flying. Can't find it on your Roku. It can be a bad scene. But if you have the DVD... I would love... Now, Silverhawks is something I have not watched in forever. I do want to show my kids all those great old 80s cartoons. I have plans to do that. Oh, you know what I just watched? Actually, thanks for reminding me. Um, I don't remember. Oh, see you, Patty. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Uh, I obviously loved, loved, loved the Starcom toys. Still have a couple. Don't have all the ones I had when I was a kid, oh, which makes me very sad, but that's a different story. I don't remember ever watching the Starcom cartoon. The other night, we finished we finished watching something. I was flipping through the, the Roku, downloaded a new app that I had never seen before, was browsing through it, and it had the Starcom cartoon. So I started watching it. I mean, it's trash. It's just a it's just a commercial, but um, but it looks great, and it's some really cool 
space combat scenes, like right in the opening first few minutes of the show. So, I dug that. I'll probably watch the rest of it at some point. Um, what color is the other one? Black. Black? Does it matter? Gray? Green? Who cares? I'll give him the black one. I think it was on something called Con TV. C O N. I had never heard of it before. What was I looking? I was looking up something and it said it was on there. And then it wasn't. So, Roku search sometimes lies to you. What are you going to do? Alright, these guys are trickier than they look. Just so many little tiny components. Uh, these figures, they do have pretty great articulation for being so tiny. Uh, more than they need, more than is useful sometimes. Sometimes it's actually harder to hold a pose because they have so much, so many little tiny joints make it kind of annoying. But yeah, this is Mega Blocks. Mega whatever they call them these days. And then the gimmick here is that you can attach them to those. And then they can say, Wee! And bounce around. That's kind of cool. Obviously, it only has uh, pegs for two. Ooh, that's interesting. At one hour and three minutes or so, all of the Nightbot commands combine to form a Voltron of timed commands, apparently. <laughs> Great. Oh, and you can you can turn it so that they're bouncing the other way. Wee! That's fun. So, like I said, I believe there was an, another set, another pack that was very similar to this one, but it had some kind of a different terrain and then a few more uh, figures. And then I have at I believe it's Comic Con. From Comic-Con a number of years ago, there was an exclusive astronaut figure, one of these. Uh, I believe it's just this standard figure, but in all in gold. And it came in a little bagged thing. Um, I have that. I haven't opened it. I don't know if it's worth anything. So I'll probably check before I, before I open it. Probably not. I, I don't think I bought it. I think they, they were giving it out. Most Comic-Con freebies don't hold any sort of value just because they produce so many of them. Not always. Sometimes there are some uh, especially popular ones. One day, we'll all get to go to Comic-Con again, right? I can't imagine this year. I don't know if they've officially canceled Comic-Con this year. I don't even think they've officially canceled WonderCon, which is supposed to be in a couple months. It seems highly unlikely that that will happen. Of course, here in California, we are just swimming in COVID cases, especially here in Los Angeles. And yet our lockdown just got lifted because why not? Makes total sense. Oh, that's hard to put together. When you lift up the one piece, it pops out the other piece. Okay, there we go. Yeah, thankfully, I'm not a big Gundam guy. And I say thankfully because there are so many cool Gundam products out there. <clears throat> Models, toys, everything, so many different scales and sizes and colors. And yeah, I never, just never, never got into it. I watched Gundam Wing, which, you know, most Americans did at that time. I have a handful of Gundam toys, mostly stuff that I was 
that were review samples from Bandai at one point, but that's about it. I got to visit and tour the Bluefin headquarters here in Southern California. Bluefin is the company that imports everything from Bandai, from Bandai Japan. Bandai Japan and Bandai US essentially are separate companies i don't know how they're classified right now it's weird a lot of tax reasons for stuff like that but um yeah so bluefin used to be a, an independent company that was just the main distributor but has since become part of bandai which is very interesting but yeah they have a big headquarters here in southern california and i got to do a couple i think it was there a couple times Get to just wander through their massive warehouse looking for neat stuff. There's a, there's a very small independent, I think it's just like one guy who rents out some warehouse space that I, I always see his stuff on Facebook and he seems like a genuinely good guy. Uh, I think it's Mecca, Mecca Warehouse, Mecca... That might be it. I don't know if he has what you're looking for, but that that'd be someone I would I would check. He seems like a good dude. It's a lot of posts, a lot of like answering people's questions. I like that stuff. I am interested. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but Bandai, in addition to all their Gundam and other cool kits, they have a model kit of. A ramen container. Does anybody know what I'm talking about with this? So it's like a million pieces and you build the noodle cube that goes inside and then it has all the different bits of onion and corn and all the little things that you stick in and then you actually build the container and it has... Yeah, it's like the the like the cup of noodles style. Uh, it's it's super neat. I've I've looked at that several times, thinking about well, that'd be that'd be pretty fun to do. And then like the label has multiple layers to get all the different colors on it. Yeah, it's it it would be just a fun silly thing. Once you're done, it's all just it it looks just like a cup of noodles. Like it's all complete and sealed, and then you. I think the top has a special kind of sticker on it so you can pull it open to see the the contents inside, but then you just close it and then it, yeah, it's it's very silly. But um, I think it came out last year, but that thing has blown up. People, lots of people are, are building that kit just because it's so, so unique. Yeah, it's food. I should get one. That mecha warehouse or whatever they they just got theirs in so maybe i'll order that from him at some point oh this guy's leg does not want to attach i just want to finish this there we go so i didn't get to it today but next time we'll talk about we'll talk about thunderbirds another thing that i have some knowledge of and some of the toys are really cool but was not part of my not part of my life growing up but yeah some of the toys are just absolutely fantastic and then they've done some attempted reboots and re-envisionings over the years that have been met with various levels of success let's put it that way cool we got a bunch of astronauts and then I suppose you could give them all guns, because that's what we need, people in space with guns. Yeah. And then first. Yeah, because I've got... From some... You know, I don't even... I don't think I ever even watched this. There was a, a relaunch of the cartoon... And they made some toys. 
that were pretty cool. Let's oh, let's see. Does this still work? <gasps> it does. Man, it just makes a lot of noise. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about Thunderbirds next time. We'll open up this baby. I've got another kind of crazy Thunderbirds toy that I... Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, it's still talking. Excuse me. I'll, I'll let you finish. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I don't really have nostalgia for thunderbirds i was never i was never into it i never really watched the old super uh super marion nation tv show i get creeped out by those <laughs> those puppets and i imagine I'm not, I'm not the only one but i do think the designs are really neat and for some reason thunderbirds has been very popular in japan it's one of those things that just got a lot of a lot of popularity there so there are some really really cool Thunderbirds toys and collectibles from Japan, and I have, I have a few of those, so I'll show those. I'll share those with you guys, you all, you people, next time. Um, all right, let me see if anybody is streaming right now to raid. I am going to get going. Remember that today, Tuesday, is also Dunes Day, and I'll be live with Jessica this afternoon at 5 p.m., Pacific, that is where we live, um, over on her channel at Jessica Nerdy. Close. Okay, who do we want to raid? Got a couple people on. Should we see what Pete is doing? All right, let's raid Let's read our good friend Pete. Oh, I should say that, speaking of Pete, our Myths and Video Games show is coming back uh, next week, I think. Next Wednesday, so a week from tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have a very special first episode. We've got some cool stuff planned. Um, yeah, oh, we'll, we'll be talking about that more as we get a little bit closer. Everybody have a great rest of your day. I hope to see you later on for Dune or some silliness that may or may not relate to Dune. Um, otherwise, have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk Warhammer and we'll talk about some of the new stuff that just got announced. Um, work on something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll paint tomorrow. I don't know. I'm just... I'm so tired in the morning. I just don't think I could. I don't think I have the, the the mental acuity and the uh, the balance to do some really good painting in the morning. Unfortunately, we'll see. Anyway, okay, go say hi to Pete. I'm sure he's playing a video game and trying to be very focused. So go and uh, go and say something silly to break his concentration. Okay, bye everybody. Special.